Now, this is a very important, another very important system to know about, which is the attenuation of an operon. Now, the attenuation is not induction and is not the repression. It's modulation of gene expression, attenuation, which is actually repressing the gene expression, but in a different way. It's not going to use activator molecules and it's not going to use repressor molecules. The only thing that's going to work here is the DNA itself. So how does this one happen? In case of the tryptophan operon, okay, tryptophan again, you already know one thing about tryptophan operon. What is it? It's constitutively expressed, but if you have enough tryptophan, you do not need any more of it, so you shut it down. So if you have that tryptophan, and it's going to bind to a repressor and activate it, so now you shut down the expression of the operon. Now, the tryptophan operon has another way to make sure that it's not going to waste energy. If you look at the gene of this, at the genes present in this operon, you're going to find four segments that this is in the DNA. This is very important. This is in the DNA. Segments in the DNA. Now, we have regions one, two, three, and four. The start codon here is to you know to start your transcription and subsequently your translation is right after the uh, promoter region. So now let's say if you have oh and it's in here too, you have two sites that are coding for tryptophan right there. Now you think about it, once you start the transcription of this operon, see it's for glue, that's okay. Please. You know this is bacteria, so transcription and translation are coupled. So now you have your transcription and your RNA starts to come out from that side and a polymerase, RNA polymerase is making the crochet RNA, messenger RNA. And right away, what happens? Ribosomal subunits will get together and start making the protein. So right after region one, there are two codons that call for tryptophan. So what is it that has to happen? When you are translating the messenger RNA, it's going to call for a tRNA that has tryptophan attached to it, right? To make your translation, translate into the protein. If your levels of tryptophan in the cell are low, you are not going to have a readily available tRNA with tryptophan. Your levels are low. So you're going to really wait a long time for the guy, you know, come up with that tryptophan. So, Messenger RNA is calling, tryptophan, come on, where are you? I need two of you. And then one shows up and says, come on, I need another one. By that time, translation is delayed. It's waiting for tryptophan tRNA to show up. But transcription is not delayed. It doesn't have anything to do with those amino acids. So the transcription of this gene is still going on. What happens then is that a loop is going to form here between this region and that region, region 2 and region 3. Those region 1 and 2 and then region 3 and 4, uh, 2 and 3 are complementary. Let me go forward a little bit because this can get to be confusing. Look at this. You have to have this clear picture in your mind. Once you have the clear picture also with the, with the images, it's not that confusing. So here you have tryptophan codons before region 1. And then look at this. You can form a loop of RNA interaction once you have your transcription of region 1 and 2, and you can also form another loop of region 3 and 4. But alternatively, you can form 2 and 3 loop of this region and that loop. So here is, we have one hairpin here, we have another hairpin there, two hairpins, or you can have only one hairpin here. When the tryptophan level is high, the region 3 pairs with the region 4. So high level of tryptophan, very fast, three pairs with four, and then one pairs with two, three pairs with four, and then this structure will just mess up all this transcription. It's going to dissociate all the transcription. Messenger, uh, uh, the, the RNA polymerase is going to fall off. Transcription is going to stop. So this is a way of attenuating gene expression because if you don't have transcription, you don't have translation. 
You don't need to make any more tryptophan if you have plenty of this available. Now, when your levels are low, look what happens here. When your levels are low, the region two and three have time. You see, this is the transcription, they're going around. The region two and three have time to interact. So this hairpin here allows for continuous transcription. So that does not block the operon. This tells the operon keep on going. So tryptophan levels are low. It means you're waiting for tryptophan to get there. So at that point, your transcription keeps on going and you form two and three hairpin loop. And that is a signal to keep on making more tryptophan because we are low on it. Okay. How this system works is very important to have the visual effect. How does a cell know when to make more of an amino acid or when it already has enough? Let's look at one way the tryptophan operon does it, called attenuation. This process, together with the separate action of the trip repressor, fine-tunes the level of transcription based on the cell's need for the enzymes. The tryptophan operon has a leader sequence called TRIP-L, which codes mRNA with four special sequences. Sequence 1 codes a leader peptide which requires two tryptophans. We'll see why this is important in a minute. Sequence 2 contains a string of bases which are complementary to a string in sequence 3, and sequence 3 contains a string complementary to bases in sequence 4. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter sequence and starts to transcribe the trip leader sequence. As soon as a small section of mRNA is transcribed, ribosomes begin to translate it. Recall that sequence 1 codes for two tryptophans. When tryptophan is abundant, there are lots of trip-charged tRNAs and the ribosome quickly moves through this section of mRNA and covers part of sequence 2, preventing or disrupting any base pairs between region 2 and region 3. As sequences 3 and 4 are transcribed, their complementary bases quickly pair and the stem and loop lollipop acts as a termination sequence, or attenuator. The RNA polymerase... Okay, so this is a very important part of how do you get one loop or another loop formation here. Remember, you have here coupled transcription and translation. So if you have plenty of tryptophan here, and you have this uh, ribosomal system that are just going very quickly through this messenger RNA, it will get to the region 2 very fast. So that will allow 3 and 4 to interact. Now, if it was installed out here on region 1, waiting for those tryptophan tRNAs to show up, and they're taking a long time, so then what happens is that 2 is going to be free, or 2, two is going to be able to interact with 1, and then 3 with 4, and that's going to mess it up. And Let's see here. tryptophan is present a lot. Yes, then the the ribosomes will go very fast. Right. It will not so get. There's a lot of there's, there's a lot of tryptophan. Then sequence one and two are going to bind, and sequence three and four are going to bind, and form two separate hairpins, and then the polymerase is going to fall off. Yes. If you have yes, if you have a lot of tryptophan, this goes very quickly. Drops that will make the whole system to fall off. From the DNA before it can transcribe the tryptophan synthesis genes. The cell has plenty of tryptophan already, so why waste energy making more? Suppose tryptophan is scarce and there are few charged trip tRNAs available. When the ribosome reaches the tryptophan codons on the newly transcribed mRNA, it pauses, waiting for a trip tRNA, but it is not yet covering sequence number two. RNA polymerase continues to transcribe mRNA and sequence 2 can now pair with complementary bases in sequence 3. This stem and loop structure does not act as a termination sequence and the RNA polymerase continues to transcribe the tryptophan structural genes. When there is a lot of tryptophan and trip tRNAs, the attenuate... So he's installed here, he's in region 1, 
So remember, now the translation here is getting behind. So the transcription is keeping on going. Okay, that's the transcription. That's the RNA, right? RNA polymerase right there. You have your RNA here. Now, when your one region one is blocked, region two and three can pair up. Region two and three pair up. That means keep on going. So the system is not going to dissociate. And sequence two can now pair with complementary bases in sequence three. This stem and loop structure does not act as a termination sequence, and the RNA polymerase continues to transcribe the tryptophan structural genes. When there is a lot of tryptophan and trip tRNAs, the attenuate. When you are reviewing this, just go back and watch it, because the more you watch, the more it's going to be, you know, it's going to be synced in. So this is just the um, 2D representation or non-moving representation of the tryptophan attenuation of the operon. And whenever you are reviewing, you know, just go through each of the steps that we just talked now.